Alright, so, um, this video will be adding animations to the character that appears inside of the, uh, Vicky Port frame. Like, the character has an animation. And, uh, we're gonna make it where you can actually, like, turn into the character you pick. So, yeah. And also, by the way, if you don't want to, like, morph into the other character, and uh, into the character you pick, you, you can probably skip, like, the last few steps. So, yeah, but in order to actually play as a character, we need to add like a play button that shows up so we can actually click on it. Now, unlike the, unlike my own, un, unlike my own game, the play button, uh, you can only click on it if you already chose something. So you have to click on it, these buttons first, and then press the play button. So let's go ahead and just add the play button for now. Uh, let's add a. Out of this, uh, this frame, you're gonna add another, uh, maybe a text button because play it's gonna say play on it, and we're gonna make it to size to 1010 again, again because we want it to be scale and not offset. Now we're gonna drag this to over here. Now you can put your play button anywhere, I just want mine to be over here. And I'm gonna make my play button look blue. You don't have to do it though. Like you can design your play button any way uh, you want. Just make sure that the size is scaled and not offset it. Same as the position. Uh, we're gonna play over here. Alright, I'm gonna also add a UI corner real quick. Alright, that doesn't really look the best, but it's good enough. So, I'm also gonna name this text button something. So, go to the name and rename it into uh, play button. Now, this is important, so, because we're gonna reference that name in our script. So, make sure to name, uh, make sure to name it correctly. Play button. So what's gonna happen is um, uh, when you click the play button, uh, the entire frame is gonna just go down, and you can't click on the buttons anymore because it it's out of the screen. So okay, but before we actually code the play button, I'm gonna do the animations first. Now this is gonna be pretty simple. So let's just say I wanted a um, animation that plays if uh, in a noob. So uh, you, I'm not gonna actually teach how to make an animation, but you should probably research that by yourself. But anyways, uh, to m anyways, just get the animation ID. Don't worry about saving the priority of your animation because I'm gonna make it where the script automatically does that. So if you want an animation that plays while you're inside the view frame, you're just gonna add an animation to whatever character inside of the character for that you wanna change the animation. Name this animation uh, character selection animation. Make sure it's actually named that and uh, the capital letters are correct. And you gotta put your animation ID in. Now I'm just gonna grab just a random animation animation that I made out. Uh, I don't really want to make one right now. Uh, yeah, this could probably work. I, know, I forgot what that was, anyways. Alright, so put the animation ID in. Uh, I'm not going to put one for bacon now, but just know that you can put it for every character that you want an animation. Just put it with noob. Oh, yeah, and also, if you're making a character, make sure it has the animate local script inside. I'll put mine, my bacon doesn't have it, so I'm going to put it inside here. Uh, what this does is just make the walking animation stuff. So if you actually want to morph into your character, you basically need this if you want walking animations. All right. Now that we did that, we actually make the animations play. Now this is gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna head over to the only script we made, and uh, see our clone is the clone of the character. So what we're gonna do is gonna if clone. Find first child character selection animation. 
So if it actually knows that the key, so if what this does is it basically checks if the, like your character has an animation, a character selection animation inside of it, because uh, my bacon doesn't have one. So if it does, then it's gonna load the animation and then play the animation, All right? So we're gonna do local um, anim track equals clone with which are humanoid. Uh, and the, uh, yeah, you have to, you have to have a human on every single character. Which are humanoid, the animator, load animation, and then this. Now we're gonna make the anim track looped, of course. I'm gonna make the anim track priority as high as possible. So action four. Now what uh, animation priority does, if you don't know, basically like sets a priority of the animation. So if if one of your animations has a priority of action, but the others has something lower, a lower priority like core, and they're both playing at the same time, the one with action uh, will play, will will play over the one with the lower priority. And the reason why we're setting it in the character selection script is if you have an animate script, animate script inside of your uh, character, it's probably gonna play whatever your idle animation inside of here. So you can do this to override the idle animation. Uh, you can do the action for it to override the idle animation. And we're actually going to play the anim animation track. And, uh, yeah. <coughs> now, uh, see, I'm not really... I don't really know that much about memory leaks, but... All I know is, I think if we could make too many animation tracks, the humanoid can't fit anymore. So what I'm actually going to do... I'm going to store the animation tracks in a table and every single time I change my character I'm going to clear that table so that table local um, animation track table I'm gonna, it's going to be empty for now but once you do this we're going to actually table that insert animation track table animation track alright and now this basically just puts your animation track inside the animation track table whenever you make a new one. And then whenever you, and we only want one at a time. So at the beginning of the script, uh, make it where you clear table that actually we're gonna do for I for pairs. Oh, we already using V so we'll do A and pairs uh, animation track table do um if a then a game that debris add item a zero and then we're gonna clear the table now what this does is basically it just destroys any animation tracks that already exist inside the animation track table uh it, the forwarding it basically it loops through every single thing inside of the table and then if there is one it destroys it uh remember this is to prevent memory leaks uh, i mean it will work if you don't do this but i prefer you actually do it and wait we might as well actually since your animation trick might as well stop them too all right now let's see if those animations actually play i'm gonna test my game uh if i click on do so it turns out that actually did not work, and it's because of this animation local script. Now, it was supposed to override the animations, I don't know why it didn't. So we're going to do something else. If you have any animations inside your character that's not the character selection animation, like if it's an animation script. Like, for example, the animate local script, we're going to manually copy it. If you, we're going to manually copy it into the player's character whenever they morph into them. So put it into replicate storage and put inside a folder called uh morph chosen this the reason why i named this is because every time you i'm gonna make it if you morph into that character uh, the stuff inside morph children will become the child of your character and remember child in roblox either just means it'll be under your character it kind of sounds a little weird but yeah 
Now it should work if you don't have any animate local scripts inside of here. Okay, uh, now we're gonna, I'm gonna just show you it works. I'm gonna, I wanna fix something with my, I'm actually gonna fix something with my uh, viewport frame. I'm gonna make the background transparency blue, but the anim, the am, I mean the background color blue, but the image color is white. All right, let's test this. We might only have an animation for the uh, noob, so yeah. The bacon currently doesn't have an animation. And if you don't feel like picking your own animation, you can also always just get Roblox's default animations by copying the ID from uh, an animate local script. But I don't suggest that. Okay, you see, it has a custom animation. And yeah. Alright. So now we're gonna actually make the play button work. Uh, we're gonna actually go inside of the play button, add a local script, and this local script we're gonna name it play. Now play it'll basically do a script that parents that activated connect. Now this will just detect if you click down the button. First, it's gonna check if you actually have a character picked. So if script dot parent dot parent, which that would be the frame. Uh, with a child viewport frame, child world model, find first child, which is a model. Then, just gonna check if there's actually a model inside of the role model, and then it's gonna check if the model has a humanoid inside of it. Then, uh, then first we're gonna actually just like uh destroy whatever's and uh destroy whatever's already inside of it so we're gonna maybe we're gonna use game debris actually so well actually we're gonna put this inside of variable so uh, we're gonna store uh the model inside of viewport frame in the world model which is the character inside of a variable so local char which is character is this now we're gonna tween uh gonna tween the ui downwards so game that tween service create script that parent that parent and i'm pretty sure that would be this frame so we would tween that uh, let's see. Tweening for the new. Tweening is basically like you smoothly like moving something uh, to a, a different property. So we're gonna just be changing the position property smoothly. So I'm gonna make the tween uh, last for one second. Um, the easing style will be linear, which means it'll be straightforward. In a Using direction really doesn't matter since it's linear, but it matters more if it's like not linear. Uh, and then our property table, we're gonna change the position because udem two dot new. Uh, and then you're gonna get the frame. Look at your position. So mine, I have my x, zero point zero six eight, zero comma zero comma. Then you're gonna put this actually something like 1.5 because that just guarantees you can't see it. And I'm gonna play that tween. And yeah, uh, in order to actually morph, we are going to actually need to <coughs> um, a server has to morph it. Now right now we're just using local skips, so we actually need like the server to morph the character so everybody can see your morph. So, go and scan the case storage, and I'm gonna make a remote event, which is called character morph, right? And what's gonna happen is, <coughs> uh, it's gonna, uh, whenever you press play button, 
just gonna look for the character morph and just gonna fire the server. Fire the server and the only parameter is gonna be the char. I'm also gonna delete uh, your current character after a second. Now what fire server is, is basically just telling the server to do something. So um, <coughs> we're gonna tell the server to do something and the uh, only thing we're actually giving the server information about is what character we picked which is char. Now uh, so as server script storage we're gonna make a new script and we're gonna look for out if you fire the server uh, on server event connect uh, we're gonna detect the player that told the server what to do and the parameter which is char so in order to morph the character we're gonna clone char so char clone we'll put that into a variable local new character equals that new character the parent will be workspace or we can just make the parent to what's the parent of the player dot character and the player dot character is obviously the character of the player and the new character oh we're gonna put this as dot parent too and new character um but we're also gonna put the animate script inside so we're gonna do uh local animate script equals game actually you could probably just do for vn pairs game that rebel storage just wait for a child morph children get children do so it's gonna get every single thing inside of this folder and it's gonna clone it inside of the new character which is the enemy script so after that um we're gonna set the player that character is the new character i might as well just make also um make sure your character has a humanoid root part i'm gonna the new character uh wait for child humanoid root part that c frame equals player dot character dot c frame yeah we're also gonna make it where uh it only works if we actually have a character so we're gonna do this by um adding another uh uh Another thing for the script to check before actually fire the server, and that is to check if and game that players that local player local players uh, play your player, and check if it has a character so that character. Um, now we're going to. I think that's kind of good. So we're gonna set the player to character. I'm gonna set the character to the player to the new character. And then I'm gonna destroy the player's old character. So gain that debris, add item, player that character zero. And we're gonna put this before. Make sure this line is before whenever you see the player's new character. All right, let's test this now. I don't really think it'll work first try, since morphing is kind of something you gotta tweak around for a bit before you get it to work. But hopefully this works. So the animation plays. We're gonna click play. And there's already okay, so it doesn't know what char is. So in order to fix this, we are going to do something. Instead of instead of passing the char parameter, we can fire the name of the char. And to lead you to my next thing, make sure every single character you have a, has a different name. Like, don't have two noobs, or uh, it might not work. So. char.clone but instead uh, since char is a name now we're gonna look for that name inside of the, your UI so you can just do game that starter GI wait for child so you're gonna copy this wait for child character selection wait for child frame wait for child frame for child characters find first child and the, and the name that name gonna add that 
uh, we're gonna make this. Make sure to add a clone to it because we're cloning the character. And I'm also gonna copy this and make it where it doesn't work if there isn't that. So, um, if then return end. So basically, if it can't find the character to morph into, it, like if this script can't find the, the morph, uh, it's not gonna run any of the code. So that just prevents errors from happening. So if I test this, um, pick noob, play, argument one missing or nil. Oh, okay, I see, I see, I see, I see. Since um, the local script is telling the server script, the name of the child, we don't have to find the name ourselves, so just delete dot name over in the server script. Oh, I see why it didn't work. We're making chart a humanoid. When we're supposed to be. So keep this, but delete this. Right? Because that. We're trying to actually tell the server the name of our character, not the name of our character, it's humanoid. Because the name of our character is humanoid, it's always humanoid. Now, if we test this one more time, which I already said before, but trust me on this one. Alright, the character spawn in. But oh, I see why it doesn't work. Uh, which you see, our character doesn't actually have a C frame. It's our character's humanoid root part that has a C frame, and so I'm just gonna add humanoid root part here. Now it should work. All right, but now click on the new play him, and we actually turn into him. But as you can see. The camera isn't working. So, not only is the camera not working, but so is uh, our animations. I just don't know, but we're gonna solve the camera issue first. First of all, the camera section it doesn't it, it doesn't go down because it's a new character. So, we're actually going to make it where. If script if game that players that local player dot character uh, uh, get attribute morph then script that parent dot parent dot parent destroy and return so if it we don't want the character section to pop up when you're already in the morph, so that's just gonna destroy it. And yeah. You can remove this, but I don't really think it'll the character section screen is gonna remain up there, so uh, another thing you can do to solve this is set turn reset on spawn, uncheck this, and if you uncheck that you won't need this piece of code. If you uncheck that when you respawn, you can't like your reset on spawn, like your character section UI, it won't, it won't come back when you respawn. So, um, I actually suggest turning this off for testing purposes. Uh, I don't want to turn it off because I want to respawn. So, and let's fix the camera issue. Now, this is really simple. So we're just gonna do player. Uh, set the plating. I'm gonna. Oh yeah, and also uh, to make the script actually work, every single time you make a new character, a new character morph, and an attribute at the bottom, in this attribute morph, and make the and set it to true. So this is gonna check. So this is so we, we know if a character is in a morph. We know they're in a morph if their attribute morph is true. So set the plating. We are we are going to uh, actually inside the character inside the script. I'm gonna the upgrade stores character morph. I'm actually gonna fire the client now. Same player. 
I'm gonna fire the client, the new character. And now inside a local script. Well, not actually, probably not inside a local script. Make a new script inside a start player scripts. And make it, name it to every single time the server tells if a child character morph. Uh, on client event connect and the only parameter is the new character so I'm going to change new character um, I'm gonna make where the cameras and where the players camera follows the new characters of the game the players um, I should know workspace dot current camera the camera subject equals new character wait for child humanoid this also means you actually need a humanoid in your morph. So let's try this. Um, I don't think the animation will be fixed from what I just said, but I think the camera will probably be fixed. Okay, the way the camera works, but the animation still. The reason why there's an error here is because remember we destroyed the character section. If your thing is a morph. And for now, just reset your character every single time you want to uh, morph into another one. Uh, you need a. You can make your own system for the for when whenever the UI the GUI shows up or not. But this is just how I'm gonna do it to keep it simple. So the play button, we're gonna make it where um, if not script not parent, then return end. All right, that's pretty simple. That just makes the script end if it can't detect this own own parent, which it, it's supposed to have. But yeah. Now, for the animations not playing, uh, uh, I think I know why. We're actually gonna disable the animate script, the animate script, and I'm gonna in enable it when we parent it. So, um, we that clone apparently equals new character. I'm gonna put the such and shot variable, so local, uh, morph children equals we that clone. And morph, morph children dot parent new character and if morph children is a local script because it is then morph children that enabled equals true and instead of the morph children uh, folder you can put anything you want and that will be parented to your new character you can put so yeah the script automatically does that all right so I got it to work so what I did first of all I'd add this because if it's local script or script is gonna enable what I did is I changed the animate into a normal script and I did this with a plugin but you could but you could if you don't have this plugin you could probably just make a new script and just put everything inside of the local script instead of the new script and just copy the code from the local script into new script except um, this is this looks like a local script but it's actually service script and then I changed it into uh, the run context into local so instead of making a local script make a server script called animate but the run context is client make sure it enables false now how do you actually find the animation the animate script with all of this stuff inside uh, so there's actually a different animate script for R15 and R6 models so if your character is in R6 you should probably get the R R6 animate uh, vice versa for R15 so how do you do this how do you actually get the animate script well every character when you spawn is actually going to have the script so what I usually do is I go to workspace when I'm testing it go to my character I find the animate script and I just copy it and I paste it whenever I work on the game so see if it works yeah it works all right so yeah that's it for this one uh, so yeah that's that's it for this one and uh, yeah basically this might actually be the end of the series pretty short but yeah uh, I think another we can actually get the anime script is if you go into rig builder select the rig type you want to insert the rig and the rig will have the anime script inside of it so yeah that's all um yeah Pizza! 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 Pizza!
Pizza!